Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. My name is Anton, and in this video we're going to be reviewing the Nintendo Switch. Is it Nintendo's best video game system ever? And is it worth it? Well, let's find out. After the failure of Nintendo's last console, the Wii U, the company had learned a lot about the video game market. The Wii U failed due to bad marketing, the lack of steady big releases, and low quality games. Nintendo took all of this into account when developing the NX, the codename for their next system. Nintendo tried hard to get back onto the casual market success of the Wii, so now that we need to target the gamer market instead. To do this, then we need to make a non-gimmick heavy console that would be appealing to all ages. And that's exactly what they did with the first reveal of the console on October 26, 2016. On March 3rd, 2017, the Nintendo Switch was released to the world, and although there were a couple of issues with the system, it was still really good and really a new fresh concept. And the concept of the Nintendo Switch is that it is a hybrid between a home console and a portable like the Nintendo 3DS. So you can choose from multiple playstyles to best suit your needs. You can choose from handheld mode, dock mode, and tabletop mode. Handheld mode is really impressive. To be able to play massive games with beautiful graphics like Breath of the Wild or Animal Crossing New Horizons is truly incredible and quite impressive. The Nintendo Switch is not the most powerful console out there, but for what it does, it's really cool. The only problem that I find is handheld mode is not very comfortable. The Switch doesn't have a great form factor on its own. However, adding a case or sleeve to the system does get the job done and can drastically improve the playing experience. To enable tabletop mode, all you need to do is just slide up the Joy-Cons off the tablet, and then prop up the unsturdy kickstand. The kickstand can pop off if squeezed down, and if that happens, don't worry, as it can be placed back on it. I would deeply recommend some sort of stand or something that you can prop up it instead of using the kickstand, as you can adjust the angle more easily, which is something that the kickstand can't do. The Joy-Cons are also quite interesting. Now, when it comes to using them in handheld, they feel pretty awkward. Not only do they feel uncomfortable, but they make the device feel unsturdy and fragile, which isn't good. Also, the Joy-Cons can get loose after a while and can possibly slide off the console very easily. This hasn't happened to me a lot, but I just use a sleeve for my Nintendo Switch that solves those issues, and I can't recommend one of those enough. Also, the Joy-Con drift is awful. It makes the console almost unplayable. I have two pairs of Joy-Cons that have both started drifting. Some of the Joy-Cons are worse than others. There are fixes for them, but some are temporary ones, and there are harder permanent ones as well, so... However, there are better controllers for the Nintendo Switch, like the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, although that really doesn't solve the handheld issue, because a Pro Controller really can't be used properly in handheld mode. You can use it in tabletop mode, but not handheld mode. However, this shouldn't be necessary, as the Joy-Cons should have a higher quality build. But if you do like playing in docked mode, and just want to play on the TV the entire time, I recommend buying a Pro Controller, and you will not regret it. Well, on a more positive note, what is a system without software? Well, you're in luck, because the Switch has a fantastic library of games, with a little something for everyone. You've got RPGs like Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, you've got Pokemon Sword and Shield, you've got simulators like Animal Crossing New Horizons, you've got platformers like Super Mario Odyssey, 2D platformers like New Super Mario Bros. U, you've got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and even Super Mario Maker 2. For racing games, I can't recommend Mario Kart 8 Deluxe enough. It's fantastic, and even if you've played the Wii U one before, the Deluxe version on the Switch is fantastic. You've got multiplayer games like Splatoon 2, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and even fitness games like Ring Fit Adventure. And if you like adventure games, there's a whole bunch, such as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is an amazing game, and Paper Mario The Origami King. And there's a whole ton more, not to mention the insane amount of indie and third-party games that have been really great. The Switch is decently powerful, however with big, huge games that have a lot of graphics, models, textures, all the stuff like that, the Switch may not be the best to run those on, so they do have to be downscaled quite a bit which sometimes ruins the game. And obviously it just depends on the art style of the game and how big it is. So some games that are smaller might just be as good as the PlayStation 4 or PC versions. 
I take my Switch everywhere with me, and in handheld mode, it works really well for that. Sometimes I even bring the dock and other accessories too, but most of the time I just take the console in a nice travel bag, with a couple of game cartridges as well. The Switch is great for road trips or anything like that if you're used to playing, say, the Nintendo 3DS instead, then the Switch is pretty much exactly like that, just a lot better. The Switch doesn't have any Bluetooth headphone capabilities, so the only way to connect your AirPods or wireless headphones is by a third-party dongle or accessory. The Switch does have a headphone jack, which obviously works just as well, but in 2020, this technology is definitely becoming more common and would have been really awesome if it was there, especially since the Switch is a portable console. But the battery life is really good, between two and a half hours to six and a half hours. Obviously that depends on the game that you're playing, so if you're playing Breath of the Wild, it's probably not gonna last as long, but if you're playing some indie game or a game that doesn't really use much power, then you're probably going to be fine. And the Switch uses a USB Type-C charger, so it's really easy to connect to a device since they're pretty much a universal adapter, so you can buy a third-party one in case your official one breaks. Also, if you are into most of the online features of games, then you will probably need a Nintendo Switch Online account, which costs around $20 for a membership. The membership also includes access to some free game trials and stuff, and it also includes access to Super Nintendo and NES games. And I hope that they add N64 and Game Boy and a bunch of other systems, because the Switch is extremely lacking in legacy content. Also another thing too, the menu is simple, it's nothing complicated if you're expecting some complicated online setup to play with your friends and stuff like that, it's probably not the best idea to get a Switch. Obviously, you can probably just put up something like Discord to chat, but Nintendo doesn't have the best system when it comes to online. And there's the annoying friend codes, which are quite long and I can't remember mine, so that is something to definitely take into consideration. But overall, the Nintendo Switch is a fantastic console. With its many ways to play and great game library, it's definitely one of the best consoles out there, and the best that Nintendo has ever produced. However, the system is definitely outdated by today's standards, and the Joy-Cons present themselves as a really annoying problem. But I really hope that Nintendo follows up the system with a more powerful and better model, as it would fix all of the issues and present a better playing experience. Just fix the Joy-Cons, that's all I'm asking, or just make new ones. So I would say it's definitely worth it, and that's why I'm going to give the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. Sure, it isn't perfect, but it's still one awesome console. If you're thinking of getting one, I would say that now is probably the best time to jump in, as the Switch is quite popular and it's a big ecosystem, and the games are great, and there are a whole bunch more to come as well. However, if you don't really care about playing games on a TV and are looking for a slightly cheaper model, then I highly recommend getting the Nintendo Switch Lite. I do have a video on it, so you can check it out right here in the card and the description, and it will show you everything about it. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. If you did enjoy it, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. What do you think of the Nintendo Switch? Do you already have one? How has your experience been with it? So definitely let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next one.